Praise the Lord. Beloved, I trust that all is well with you and your household. Psalm 107 says, let us give thanks to the Lord for he satisfies us and fills us with good things. Yes, beloved, God loves us and he wants us to experience love, peace, joy. He wants only the good things for us, beloved. And this is why he says it in Jeremiah 29, 11, that all his plans for us are good and not evil to give us hope and a future, beloved. God wants us to have a future of hope, a future that we will live to have the abundant life that he promised us in John 10, 10. Yes, beloved, all the plans for us are good. So have faith in God that everything, beloved, that you are believing him to do for you, he will certainly do it for you in Jesus' name. So we are continuing our Bible studies on the book of Genesis and today we are studying Genesis chapter 19. Last time we studied Genesis chapter 18. If you missed this study, please watch it from this channel and please press the subscribe button so that you'll be notified to watch all the rest of the studies on the book of Genesis you are blessed so beloved before we go into today's study which is genesis chapter 19 let me uh talk a bit of about genesis chapter 18 because genesis chapter 19 is continuation of the events that happened in genesis chapter 18 and in this part of the uh, bible god appeared to abraham with two angels and confirmed his promise that in nine months time abraham and sarah will have a son and at the end of Genesis chapter 18, God also told Abraham of his plan to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their many sins. And Abraham pleaded with the Lord so that the Lord would spare this city because his nephew Lot lived in this city. And so we continue today in this study. What happened? We will see if God answered Abraham's request to spare Lot. So let's go on to today's study, which is titled, The Sinfulness of Sodom and Gomorrah. So let's hear the word of the Lord. In verse 1, it says, When the two angels whom God had sent came to Sodom that evening, Lot was sitting at the city gates. As soon as he saw them, he got up and went to meet them. He bowed down before them and said, says i am here to serve you please come to my house you can wash your feet and spend the night in the morning you can get up early and go on your way but they answered no we will spend the night here in the city square lot kept on urging them and finally they went with him to his house Beloved, Lot kept urging these two men because he knows the wicked nature of the men in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he wanted to prevent these men from being harmed. But what he didn't know was that these men were angels. So in verse 3, it says, Lot ordered his servants to bake some bread and prepare a meal for the guests. When it was ready, they ate it. Before the guests went to bed, the men of Sodom surrounded the house. All the men of the city, both young and old, were there. They called out to Lot and asked, Where are the men who came to stay with you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. So the men of the city asked Lot to bring these angels out so that they can sexually abuse them and rape them. Beloved, how would you feel living in a community like this? A community that does not only want to abuse you, but want to make you join in their evil acts. Yes, beloved, God has seen the wickedness of these people. And this is why God was ready to judge them and to destroy this city. After they have asked Lot to let them rape these men who were angels, verse 6 says, Lot went outside and closed the door behind him. He said to them, friends, I beg you, don't do such a wicked thing. I have two daughters who are still virgins. Let me bring them out to you and you can do whatever you want with them. But don't do anything to these men. They are guests in my house and I must protect them. Verse 9, but they said, get out of our way, you foreigner. Who are you to tell us what to do? out of our way or will treat you worse than them they pushed lot back and moved up to break down the door 
But the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back in the house and shut the door. 11. Then they struck all the men outside with blindness so that they couldn't find the door. Beloved, if you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, this is how you will command his angels to take charge and protect you whenever your enemies rise up against you. Psalm 91 verse 11 says that the Lord will send his angels, beloved, to protect you and to guide you in all your ways. Yes, beloved, God will always send his angels to protect you, just as he sent his angels to protect Lord from this evil, wicked men of Sodom. So continue reading from verse 12. It says, the angel said to Lot, if you have anyone else here, sons, daughters, sons-in-law, or any other relatives living in this city, get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The Lord has heard the terrible accusations against these people and has sent us to destroy Sodom. So the Lord remembered Abraham's pleading on behalf of Lord and provided a way of escape for Lord's beloved. God is so faithful. He is able, beloved, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we think or can even imagine, as Ephesians 3.20 says. And so, beloved, whenever you are in need, pray that God should come and help you. As he said in Psalm 50, verse 15, Call on me in time of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will give me glory. Yes, beloved, call on God whenever you are in trouble, and he will deliver you. As Abraham pleaded on behalf of Lord, God remembered and delivered him. So whenever, beloved, you pray to God about anything, just believe that God hears you, beloved, and he will remember you, and in your time of trouble, he will deliver you. So reading on from verse 14, it says, Then Lot went to the men that his daughters were going to marry and said, Hurry up and get out of here. The Lord is going to destroy this place. But they thought he was joking. Whenever preachers tell people of God's coming judgment and tell them to refrain from their evil ways and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior so that they can be saved from God's coming wrath or judgment or they can be saved from hell. Sometimes these preachers, beloved, are insulted or even mocked. And this is the same way Lord's sons-in-law behaved. The Bible says that they thought Lord was joking. If they knew that they were going to be burned alive, they would have certainly listened to Lord and followed him. And so, beloved, God always gives us the chance by sending preachers our way to warn us that his coming judgment is at hand. So we should repent from our wicked ways and make Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior so that we will not end up in hell. Beloved, hell is not just a limited number of years. Hell is forever. The same way as God has promised us that when we believe in Jesus Christ, we will spend eternity with him in heaven. This is the same way that if we do not believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we will spend eternity in hell. And there is no amount of years, beloved, that limits hell. You will burn a life in hell forever. As the Bible says in Jude chapter 1 verse 7, it says, and don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Beloved, eternal fire. This is what the Bible is talking about. That hell is not going to uh, be burned for some time and then the burning stopped. It's eternal. It burns forever. So as it turned out that Lot was not joking when he told these people that they were going to be destroyed. So, beloved, is God not joking when he tells us that hell is forever? Yes, beloved, hell is real and it's forever. So let us hear the word of the Lord, beloved. And if you have already not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Acts 16, 31 says that all you need to do is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. 
what will you be saved from beloved you'll be saved from the burning fire of hell so make jesus christ your lord and savior by saying that lord jesus i accept you into my heart please forgive me of all my sins and come and stay with me i believe that you are the son of god who died for my sins and rose up from the dead to give me salvation to give me eternal life i believe in you this is all beloved you need to say so beloved reading on from verse 15 it says at dawn the angels tried to make lot hurry quick they said Take your wife and your two daughters and get out so that you will not lose your lives when the city is destroyed. Lot hesitated. The Lord, however, had pity on him. So the men took him, his wife and his two daughters by the hand and led them out of the city. Then one of the angels said, run for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop in the valley. Run to the hell so that you won't be killed. 18, he says, But Lot answered, No, please don't make us do that, sir. You have done me a great favor and saved my life. But the hills are too far away. The disaster will overtake me and I will die before I get there. 20, let me run to this little town nearby and I will be safe. God said to Lot to run to the hills, but because he did not believe that God would take him there safely, he compromised, beloved, to go to this small town. Abraham and Lot were complete opposites. Abraham always believed that God would do what he said he would do. And Lot, on the other hand, did not have this kind of Abraham's faith. He always, beloved, compromised and did not believe in God enough. And this is why he was always in trouble as we see here and so beloved reading on from verse 21 it says the angel answered all right i agree i won't destroy that small town hurry run i can't do anything until you get there because lord called the small town small the town was named zoa and in verse 23 it says the sun was rising when lot reached zoa Suddenly, the Lord rained burning sulfur on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed them and the whole valley, along with all the people there and everything that grew on the land. But Lot's wife looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. Lot's wife looked back at the very evil and sinful place she has been delivered from. And Jesus says it in Luke chapter 17 verse 32 that remember lord's wife and do not look back beloved if you have made jesus christ your lord and savior and have become born again then jesus does not want you to look back to your old sinful ways god does not want you beloved to indulge in the same sinful behaviors that you used to indulge in and jesus uses uh, an example for us to explain how worse a person will become after they go back to their sinful ways. And this is in Matthew uh, chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. And Jesus says, When an evil spirit goes out of a person, it travels over dry country looking for a place to rest. If it can't find one, it says to itself, I will go back to my house. So it goes back and find the house empty clean and all fixed up. Then it goes out and brings along seven other evil spirits, even worse than itself, and they come and live there. So when it is all over, that person is in worse shape than at the beginning. This is what will happen to the evil people of this day. So Jesus says, beloved, to remember Lord's wife and don't go back to your old sinful ways. If you do, beloved, you will perish like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you go back to your old sinful ways, beloved, the sins, beloved, that you will commit will even be more than what you used to commit before because you would have attracted more evil spirits to come and live inside you. And when these spirits come, beloved, to live inside you, you will be worse. You will be more evil than how you used to be before. 
And so God does not want this to happen to us. And this is why Jesus says that, remember Lord's wife and don't look back. Don't go back to your former sinful ways. Focus on the new life that you have received in Jesus Christ and read and meditate on the Bible day and night as this is the only thing, beloved, that will help you to live the righteous life that God requires. So reading on from verse 27, it says, Early the next morning, Abraham hurried to the place where he had stood in the presence of the Lord. He looked down at Sodom and Gomorrah and the whole valley and saw smoke rising from the land like smoke from a huge furnace. 29. But when God destroyed the cities of the valley where Lot was living, he kept Abraham in mind and allowed Lot to escape to safety. Yes, beloved. So God honored Abraham's request and saved Lot. So beloved, keep interceding for people because God hears prayers as he saved Lot because he remembered what Abraham had pleaded on his behalf, beloved. So will he save everyone that you intercede on their behalf. God is a faithful God and he says that every word that comes out from his mouth will always go forth to accomplish what he says. And so beloved, as he did there, to remember Lord, so will he remember everyone that you have brought to him and you have pleaded on their behalf. He will remember them, beloved, and save them. And even yourself, beloved, whatever you need, go to God now, beloved. Pray and he will remember you. As he says in Psalms 15, verse 15, Call on me when you are in trouble and I will deliver you. So beloved, call on God whenever you are in trouble. Don't think that because of certain things that you have done, that God is angry with you and so when you pray, he doesn't even hear you. Beloved, call on God. Whatever sin you have committed, call on God. That is what the devil wants. He wants you to be so conscious of your sins so that you it will prevent you from going to God and ask God to forgive you. But God has said it in 1 John 1, 9, that but if you confess your sins, he is able to forgive you, beloved, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God is able to forgive you. Listen, beloved, hear it and forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, beloved, if you think that because of your many sins, you are not bold and confident to approach God, Go to God, ask him to forgive you and his word says he will forgive you. And after you have received forgiveness from God and for yourselves, then present your request to him, beloved, and God will hear you out and deliver you from every trouble that you are in. So reading on from verse 30, it says, Because Lot was afraid to stay in Zohar, he and his two daughters moved up into the hills and lived in a cave. The older daughter said to her sister, Our father is getting old, and there are no men in the whole world who would marry us so that we can have children. They said, Come on, let us get our father drunk so that we can sleep with him and have children with him. That night, they gave their father lot wine to drink, and the older daughter had intercourse with him, but he was so drunk that he didn't know it. Verse 34, the next day, the older daughter said to her sister, I slept with our dad last night. Now let's get our father drunk tonight and you sleep with him. Then each of us will have a child by our father. So that night they got him drunk and the younger daughter had intercourse with him. Again, he was so drunk that he didn't know it. In this way, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their own Father. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says that bad company corrupts good morals. Lost children have been influenced by the sinful lifestyle of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And beloved, they had become evil in themselves. They have copied the lifestyle of these people and so did not even know that their decision was wrong. They said that there were no men in the whole world, but this was not true because Abraham and his 318 servants were still living in the land of Canaan. And because these children had been influenced by the sinful lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah, they didn't find anything wrong, beloved, with their decision to sleep with their father and procreate. This is what it happens to us, beloved. Whenever we live among evil people, beloved, the 
people that you are with, the people that you surround yourself with, if you know, beloved, that you cannot influence them to change their evil ways, you cannot influence them, beloved, to become born again, then, beloved, know that if you stay with them long enough, because you cannot influence them, you will be influenced by their evil behavior. Their company, their evilness, beloved, will corrupt your good ways. And God is using this scripture, beloved, to warn us that the company, the people that we surround ourselves with, if we cannot influence them to change from their bad ways, then we should come out from them so that their evil ways, beloved, do not contaminate our godly behaviors. So reading on from verse 37, it says the older daughter had a son whom she named Moab. He was the ancestor of the Moabites. The younger daughter also had a son whom she named ben -Nami. He was the ancestor of the Ammonites. As you read through the Old Testament, you will find out that these two sons of Lot's daughters became into great nations. They became uh, the nations of Ammonites and the nation of Moabites. These two nations were so evil in the sight of God and were enemies with Abraham's descendants, the Jews. These two nations were wicked and practiced evil all the time and this is all because of the evil that they had witnessed from their uh, ancestors who were uh, Lord's daughters. Lord's daughters had copied the lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah and this is what beloved they brought up their children with and then their children became evil themselves. Beloved, the Bible says that Lot knew how evil the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah were, but he did not live and stayed. And because he stayed, beloved, not only was he affected by this, he lost his wife. He lost all his possessions that he had acquired. The Bible tells us that he had acquired so many possessions when he traveled with his uh, uncle Abraham. And now he had lost all this and ended up, beloved, living alone with his two daughters who committed the terrible sinful act with him and who gave birth to children who themselves had become wicked beloved look at what one thing had led to if lord had left this evil city all these things would not have happened and now he had lost everything that he ever worked for, plus his own life and had destroyed the life of his descendants. And beloved, Second Peter 2 verse 8 says that Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. The evil lifestyle of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah tormented him, but he did not leave the city. It tormented him. He didn't agree with the evilness that the people did, but he did not leave them. Beloved, we also have this same thing happening to us. The people that we surround ourselves with, some of them are so wicked, but beloved, we are comfortable to live with them. Some of them use so much swearing words. Beloved, if you know that you cannot change these people, then don't mingle with them, beloved, because before you know it, you will be using the same swearing words. Before you know it, you will be practicing the same evil practices and even if you are so firm in your faith and you are not going to do these things beloved then your children can also practice this evil lifestyle of the people that you mingle with because your children might not be strong in the faith to refuse this kind of lifestyle so beloved it's so important what the word of god is telling us here through the life of lord that lord thought he was firm in his faith he thought that he would not copy the lifestyles of these people so even though their lifestyle tormented him he thought beloved that he was able to still live there and enjoy his life but look at the consequences of that although he didn't take part in their evil ways his children became evil and even worse than these people this lifestyle of the people beloved had influenced his children so, beloved, let us take heed to the word of God. And if we cannot change the people around us, but then we must come out from them so that their bad, evil ways, beloved, do not corrupt our good morals. 
So this brings us to the end of today's study. Beloved, I pray that this word of God will stay in your heart forever and guide your path so that, beloved, it will help you to make the right choices and the right decisions in life for you to experience the abundant life that Jesus Christ promises us in John 10.10. 10. You are blessed. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified to watch the next Listen, may the Lord provide every need of yours so that, beloved, you will also have enough to bless other people in Jesus' name. You are blessed.